Hi there, I'm Brian Kelly. I'm a rapper solo dancer, also a Cotswold Morris dancer these days. And I also have an interest in digital memories. Uh, this was something I've developed in particular during lockdown when I've been having regular fortnightly meetings with old school friends and we've been get, looking at our memories of when we were at school and music we were into as teenagers and the pubs we used to go to when we were in our 20s and that was interesting and also during lockdown I've had a fortnightly meeting with um, Haymarket Rapper uh, one of my current rapper teams and that's been interesting as well and so I would just like to describe the methodology I've been using for rediscovering digital resources um, associated with my rapper dancing memories, my main rapper dancing teams. But this is a methodology that might apply more widely, not just for rapper teams, sword teams, but also for Morris teams, or indeed other community type teams. So let me just, so here's a bit about my rapper dancing history. I started off with Kingsmen in 1978, uh, October, a couple of years after that, I joined Sally Port Sword, wearing the Sally Port sweatshirt at the moment. I then thought I might uh, have to move away from the Northeast and the rapper dancing world. So I joined Hexham to learn uh, some Cotwells, so I learned in Cotwold. And then, yes, I then did move south. I moved to Hull, where I joined Green Ginger Morris, and then further south to Loughborough, where I joined Phoenix Swords and in the East Midlands Black Cap. So, uh, various careers, three of those teams are now defunct, but there are a number of teams that are still ongoing, Northgate in Bath and Haymarket and Wild, who I still dance with, and also a couple of one-off performances with other teams. But in this talk, I'll really be focusing on my first two teams, which was the Newcastle Kingsman and also Sally Port Sword. So looking at the Kingsman history, we can go to the current website, kingsman.co.uk. Uh, we find a website that was launched in 1997, a long time ago, and it's still available with lots of resources on that website, so over two and a half thousand files, over 30 megabytes with lots of photos and videos. But as you'll see, if you look at the footer, it doesn't seem to have been updated for over for over five years. I think the team is now mainly using Facebook and Twitter, as is the case with many teams, of course. But we do have that website that has been ongoing for that for that period. So if I want to look at the history of the Kingsman, I can and the website, I can go to the Internet Archives Wayback Machine. If you just Google it, you'll find archive.org slash web, and you can simply type in a, a URL, a website there, and then you'll get the history of how the website looked at various times. So you can see there's been lots of snapshots of the Kingsman website since 2004 and all the way up to present time. So what might we find if we go to one of those old snapshots? And of course, you could do this for live. Everything I'm showing, you can all do this as all things are on the, the public web. So this was the first page that I found um, there back from 13th of August 2004. Um, and we can see that there are links down at the bottom to the team to Rapper, Grenicide and Reuter as well as the photos and links for other, other, uh, to other resources. And as I said, you can go to this old view of the website, this URL here. So there might be some stories that I can, some memories by looking at these old pages, or of course, also by chatting to these five dancers. And so looking at the links page, we can see the links that the Kingdom were provided on that date, which was, where was it? 14th of August, 2014. 
So here are a whole set of wrapper sides. Is this all the wrapper sides? So these are in the UK and over here, some abroad. Um, so this is interesting. And if you click on one of these links, such as Northgate Wrapper, another of my sides, you'll find now the links that they provide and the photos they shared in 2004, which includes photos of their appearance in Glastonbury. Now, of course, when I looked at that, I thought, well, of course, this isn't all the wrapper sides because there's no Sally Paul there. And so it's actually wrapper teams that had websites back in those days. We may find that some of these wrapper sides no longer exist. But what we can do is we can go to this page, click on any of these links and see what their website was like in 2004. So there's an example of how this resource can be valuable, even for defunct sites, even for websites that no longer exist. We can go back in time and see photos, maybe videos uh, from that time. Now, moving on to, to Sallyport, the current website is sallyportsaw.co.uk. And up at the top, we have the links to tradition, what's on, and contact, of, contact us. But what about the history of this website? The history of the team? Oops, misspelled uh, dancers there. Sorry for this furious apostrophe. But what dancers have they performed when did they start doing new dances and the like? Will this tell us? Or maybe not. If we look at some of the pages, if we go back to the way, way back machine with sallyportsaw.co.uk, we'll find that there are only snapshots of this page between from, dating back to the 1st of October last year. So not a great deal of information there. Um, so and the oldest page doesn't tell us anything new. The page has really been static since that time. So how do we find out about Sally Port's missing history? This is where contextual knowledge is needed. So I have old email messages from Vince Rutland, which include a message from 2013, 14th of March, in which there was an announcement of a new website address for, um, for Sally Port. So now I'm going to take that website address, which is not currently defunct, but I can use that with the Internet Archive. And this is where I find that there were crawls were taken between 2013 and 2018. But to be fair, but to be honest, not all of these are from the Sally Port sword use of that address, as I'll show. So we go back and we find the last capture of the old website was 22nd of December 2018. And we have links to the dancers contact us. Uh, links and a help page. Oh, by the way, this is lovely. Those of you who have an interest in the rapper community, the rapper history, will particularly appreciate this photo. And so we have a list of the dancers. The long sword dance, and one, two, three, four, five of the rapper dancers. So this is from 2016. We have this information. And then going back to 2014, it's the same website, really the same contents, um, but uh, uh, just a slightly different uh, display shown. But what of the team before 2014? Because I joined in 2000, and, uh, in 2000 I think, no, 1990 it was. So if we go back, we can, we can uh, want to find out a previous domain name. So how would I find out the previous domain name? It might be some type of advanced searching or we can meet up in a pub where we have a chat about the previous domain names. But another approach is for me to look at the minutes of previous AGMs. And for the AGM minute for 2010, there was some discussion about the Sallyport org domain. And so I put this domain name into the Internet Archive, and I found we've got a history from 2006 to 2018. Sorry, this is where I should say that that is not all 
about the website owned by Sally Port, as I'll show. So the oldest page uh, here we are, put in, uh, and this was 2006. So we can see this is what the not quite what the page looked like. The style sheets didn't come 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 over, but this is the content and the images that were provided. It was hosted on a content management system called Plone and a similar set of our dancers, history, links, and news page. And five dancers were mentioned here. So the, what we gain from this is that Poppleton was mentioned in the previous website, was learnt after this time. <clears throat> so that was the oldest page, 2006. Let's move on a bit to 2007. Um, similar type of information, you can see the the list of the dancers there, you can click on them and see a summary of the dance and also a news information. And that was interesting. The news for 2007, Sally Port won the traditional prize for dancing Swalwell and Stewart walked off with the prize for the best character after superb Tommy off against Chris Pitt from the Kingsman. I remember that. I'd forgotten about this till I till I saw that. So that was some value in rediscovering um, that very old website. So moving on, to, this is how the website looked in um, May the fifteenth, two thousand and twelve. So yes, they lost ownership of the website. The uh, domain name hadn't been renewed. And this is what the website looked like. And this was the translation of the website, of that content on the website from the Japanese. And in 2018, it was up for sale. So there we have, this is as far as I can find, sallyport.org from 2006. Last capture was in 2008, but it might have been 2009, it was still alive. And 2014 to 80, about 18, was on this domain. And then just more recently, sallyportsaw.co.uk. But what happened to the sallyport.org website, that original website? What's it look like now? Well, here it is. It's owned by a not very competent internet pirate. Welcome to Sallyport, founded in year by founder name. It's come a long way from its beginning in whatever. <laughs> so it's up for sale, and there's a template there if you want to steal, use, buy that, that domain. So that's Sally Port and the Internet Archive. But there is Internet Archive was created by Brewster Kale, uh, uh, he's based in California, I think it is. But there is also the UK Web Archive provided by the British Library, which aims to collect all UK websites at least once a year. But when you type in the Kingsman and current Sally Port domains, get zero results. So my recommendation, if you do have a UK website, um, see if it's in the UK web archive, webarchive.org.uk, type in your domain name and see the results. And if you're not there, you can click on the save, oops, save a, a UK website and submit your details. And I did this for my current Wild Morris team, which is based in Bridport in Dorset. I submitted information and they sent me a, a reply and said, just confirm that we're happy for it to be archived. So now that's gone through the system. So the, the Wild Morris will have a history for future generations, a digital history, which is appropriate to our 10th year this year. So there'll be something in 10 years time to look back and see what the team was doing during the lockdown. So UK Web Archive is, is valuable. So there's two approaches, the Internet Archive and the UK Web Archive. But what does other online services might be of use in this digital archaeology? So a brief, very brief technical diversion. We have a URL, uniform resource locator, treated as a website address. And you might think, well, once you get a, 
uh, you fail to renew your website address or you get a new one, you say, we've left the address, somebody else now owns it, we might live there, we don't care anymore, it's got no relevance. But another way of regarding a URL is it's a uniform resource identifier. It's an identifier. Now, normally URIs and URLs do the same type of things. But if you think about it, that identifier can tell us something about the resource which might be about who's talking about the resource, who's referencing the resource. And so those old um, website addresses can be available. As we've seen, we've already looked at what did it look like, say, 10 years ago, but it might also be was who was linking to the website in the past. So that can be use, not just what the web team, what the team itself was saying about itself, but what other people were saying. So let's just have a look at a tool. There are lots of tools. Um, and this is where having that identifier URI can be important because in the Wayback Machine, there's over 550 billion web pages. And the URL is the key for finding out amongst all of those 550 billion web pages. So that's important. So let's just have a look at Sally Port history using an SEO backlink tool to look at one of the, the previous domain. Um, and we're using this ahrefs.com and the backlink checker. So type in this domain name into it and we find out the backlinks. So there were just 16 backlinks from eight different domains. Some of them were directory services, most of those are directory services. If those directory services are still um, being updated, Sally Port will probably want to go through there and say, update it to the point of a current domain, not a non-existent domain. But here was one, this looks interesting, 2017, a um, Croatian National Tourist Board have a link to their own website. So I clicked on this link here. And what did I find? I found it out, found it about a longsword festival. There were information about the festival and some information about the various teams that perform there, including here we are, Sally Port performing a longsword dance. And I recognize those five of those dancers, one person is hidden there. There's something for the team. Who is do these shoes belong to? And yes, a link to the festival program. So that was of interest. But of course, there was an older website for Sally Port, as I said, 2006 to 2008. It, so this was very old. But if I go to Ahrefs and look at links to sallyport.org, there are just uh, 22 links and seven domains. Most of them are, again, these directory services or links to the pirate websites and the like. Uh, but this looked interesting. Biker Ted's Diaries, The Bells, it must be the gate to Subtle. So does this website still exist? I wonder. And of course, the answer is, yes, it does. And here we have it blog post, somebody who wrote about the various teams who were dancing at the Gout to Subtle 2019. And in it, we had not just a post, but also an embedded YouTube link, which is still there. So here we have it. I don't think the sound will be well. Stewards. So there we have it. Okay, this talk will be about the finding the digital memories, not discussions about the digital memories themselves. So if you want, you can find that YouTube video, which is still there, and there's a URL to the page. I should say that in the accompanying notes, I'll provide all the links uh, for you to follow, as well as a transcript of this talk. So let's go on. 
So going back to the Kingsman, well, the Kingsman is this large and well-established link. So there'll be lots, we'll expect there to be lots of links to the to the website. And in fact, there are over a thousand backlinks with Ahrefs found from over a hundred domains. Again, lots of dialectary listings, there'll be various folk festival listings, but also some blog posts. So I thought there were some interesting posts there. Some of them, such as this one, this no longer exists. Well, this was an interesting one, livingtowork.blogspot.com. So this is from 2012, with an interesting title, Violet to Swans by Susan Corby. Something about teams competed, but the pick of the bunch with Newcastle Kingsman and Sally Port. And from what I can tell, the Sally Port, oh, what was this? Um, well, let's just have a look. By the way, I am only using the free version of this service if I wanted to. So this just gives a handful of backlinks. If I want to see all the back, backlinks, be $7 for a seven day trial or from $99 to $999 per month to use the service. So no, thank you. I'll not do this. But it's interesting what things I can get for free. So let's just look at this. And here we have it. That was the text. But the pick of the bunch were the Kingsman at Sally Port. This was at Dirt, uh, uh, representing the Dirt last year, this year in London. So the Dirt in London in 2012. And from what I can tell, the Sally Dirt dancers all originated in the Kingsman. And look, there are some. YouTube videos. Oh, and there's a mention of the two two characters, the Tom and the Betty. And this year, my friend Andy, Andy Twin, was the Betty for the Kingsman. And his twin brother Pete used to dance with the Kingsman. So there we have it. So I'm finding some of these uh, these memories. And let's just move on. And what we have are these two videos. One was from 2012. One was from a uh, from the pub. And another was uh, from the showcase in which there were two sem somersaults at two men's 20 seconds. And there are also two Bettys featuring this. I'm not going to show this now, but I'll just show this video at the end of, of, of this talk. So let's just move on. Oops, move on. There. So to conclude, if you care about your team's history these days, you can't ignore your digital history. The current URL for your website is important, so look after it and remember to renew it. But those previous URLs are important as well. If you did forget to renew it, try and find out what the old URLs, make a note of them, keep that in your archives, in your team's archives, because it can be used by services such as the Internet Archives Wayback Machine and also the British Library's UK Web Archive. But you need to perhaps check that you're in the UK Web Archive. And if you're not, register your address with it. And there will be valuable resources such as in the real world, the minutes, the minutes from AGMs, but also chats with team members about some of those forgotten information. And even if you don't care about your team's history, others may well do so. And perhaps those potential recruits if you can see this is what we were doing in the past, that might be valuable recruiting age aid. So this was about looking at my dancing history or my memories for my first two teams. I'll be looking to give another talk, which will be some of the more challenging ways of finding out team's history, perhaps also about team's history for defunct teams. How do I find the records, the, the team, set up in this particular uh, uh, date and perform at these festivals and also those accompanying resources, the photos and videos associated with these teams, particularly if they folded before the web existed. So that'll be an interesting challenge for me. I do have an interest in the, the current teams and looking at the history for Wild Morris, our 10th anniversary this year, and also for Haymarket. Well, I hope you've found this talk of interest. And I did say I'll finish off with a video 
just let me let to say that I'll be uploading this talk to YouTube and I'll try and create a transcript of the talk and the, so the notes which will contain all the links. So here we go. You'll see there are two teams dancing there to, uh, uh, simultaneously. I wonder what would happen. Could we have three teams? Oh yes, we can. Ah, well, there's me coming as a Betty. Two teams, two Betty's. Results does that count as a double sum result? There's a double salt. Oh, two double summer salts. Wow. What's better doing? the double sun and towers. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. I hope you enjoyed those two dance displays and I hope you enjoyed this uh, approach to ways of finding out your wrapper teams, your solid team or your Morris teams digital memories. Thank you.